So I have an idea. Let's switch gears completely. Hey, Brian. Hey, Chewy. I hear you had a story. I did have a story. About misery and pizza. <laughs> yeah, I was getting... I, I, if... <laughs> If you had left out either of those things, I would have said that's not it. But misery and pizza, <laughs> actually. So Monday, I had gone to the grocery store. We had ground beef. We had things to make for dinners. I got home from court a little later than I was expecting to. And every time I go to court, where I have been out for a significant period of time from the house and I've been around other people. I shower and get changed when I get home. Part of our, you know, reality in the world we're living in right now. So I knew that to make dinner, I also had to add on time to shower and change and all that good stuff. And Carrie and I were talking about it. And she said, hey, rather than doing that, Let's order pizza from this one well-known national chain. We have credits and a gift card, both of those things. Why do we have credits? Because the last time we ordered from them, it took a little too long and some of the pizza was stuck to the box. So when Carrie, you know, emailed corporate, they said, okay, here's, here's some credit toward your next one. No big deal. And we're like, you know, it doesn't happen a lot. No big deal. And it will be faster. That's the whole point. She can go and put it in and it will be faster than starting to make a meal after I've gotten out of the shower. Okay. Uh, everybody, some people eat dinner earlier than us. A lot of people eat dinner later than us. Some, some people don't eat dinner until like 10 at night, the monsters. Hi. But, uh, it's not but, that late. <laughs> but we, we usually eat somewhere between five and six. This is pretty normal. Um, if we're really, really starving, like sometimes before five, but we were just starting to get hungry. So Carrie placed the order at four fifty-five, and they have a tracker online so that, um, she placed the order. She could see when it was being made. She could see when it came out, when it was done with quality control and when it went out. Part of the problem the last time is that it was stuck on quality control for over a half an hour. So we were like, is that going to happen again? No. At 5.13, it goes out for delivery. So we're like, all right. That's from, you know, that's 20 minutes-ish from when we place the order to when it goes out. That's fine. That's great. And we're waiting. And we're waiting. And I, I don't mean to imply, oh, he's trying to drag this out for effect. I mean, when it's been out for delivery for about a half an hour, we're starting to get a little like, okay, maybe they had to go to a couple other places first, but pizza doesn't stay good forever. So, but I'm, I'm trying to be cool about it. We're watching the tracker, still shows out for delivery, out for delivery. I'm going to turn to my phone now because I don't want to get these, uh, I'm, uh, I don't want to exaggerate. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this was on Monday. So then I placed the first call at 6.07, where it's now been an hour minus five minutes, uh, 10, however many minutes. Um, since it's been out, not since we placed the order, since it's been out on the road and we're concerned. Plus, at about six o'clock, it showed that the pizza had been delivered, which we're like, okay, do they take it to the wrong house? Even though we have ordered from this particular store several times, like not, we're not doing it every week like some people, but once a month, maybe once every other month, enough that, you know, they should know where we are. And Chewy and Dirk will tell you that I live in a neighborhood. It's not like a small neighborhood. It's it's not like I'm living out. You know, you take the left at the at the beech tree, and you take the right at that rock that looks funny, and you go five paces and you turn around, and you know, no, this is. I mean, this is an address, and we live in a world of GPS, 
and this house is 20 years old, so it's not like it just sprang up yesterday. Dark's neighborhood is much newer. Uh, my The car, my GPS that I need to update, does not know where Dark's house is. Um, but this is this is not a super old house, but it's been there long enough. Yeah. And as a DoorDash driver, there are places where the Maps app in my phone doesn't know how to get to. But Brian's house is not one of them. <laughs> right. So, and, and so it shows delivered. And I'm like, well, maybe that just means that they are like here and it's already been updated. So we wait the five, seven minutes or so. And I call and it rings a couple times. Person picks up and they say, this is the pizza place. Will you hold? And I'm like, sure. Because what am I supposed to say? What a dumb question. I'm sorry, but no, I don't want to hold. I'm a rebel or no, I want to speak to the manager right now. I can't wait another second. So I say, sure, because even though it's kind of ironic because I'm literally calling because I've been waiting. But so I go on hold for 15 minutes and I'm like, do I hang up and call back? Because that won't do any better. I'm still going to be waiting. So they, they do come back to me and I say, hey, I'm just concerned because we placed the order at this time. It's been out for over an hour at this point. And, you know, we just, what's going, and now it's showing that it's delivered and we haven't gotten it. So what's going on? He's like, what's your address? I say, I live at Brian's place. And they say, oh, okay. Um, and he says, yeah. And he, he recognizes the address, which is probably not the best sign. But he says, yeah, um, we're really sorry about that. Uh, and he gives some excuse about their driver was uh, – it was his first time going out and we're like, okay. He's like, but, but we, we think we've got it figured out and we'll go ahead and, and comp your, your dinner. And I'm thinking, well, I mean, that's right. I wasn't necessarily going to ask for that as long as it came on time, but I said something to the effect of, and will we get, we, we appreciate that. Will we get fresh pizza? And he paused for the span of like two seconds, <laughs> which is probably not another good sign. He said, oh, well, you know, we're already comping this one and uh, it'll, it'll still be fresh. That was his assurance. And he said something to the effect of, and if it's not, just let me, just let us know. And I'm thinking, what at that point, I've already been waiting an hour. What at that point are you going to do if my pizza isn't fresh? Are you going to make, me a new one and then take it an hour to get here but i just i said okay fine you know that's that's fine i will tell you despite what i do for a living and what people think attorneys do and and how i have to be in court sometimes i am generally not a very big conflict guy in my personal life i'm not there to see the manager or be a karen or do any of that you know meme stuff i just i, I try to be agreeable. I'm sure that's fine uh, Carrie's starting to not feel well, so she has a, a quick snack, and we debate, do we start making something? We're not going to make something. Food is on the way. They just said food is on the way. I uh, call again at 6.54 when now, there's no pizza. At this point, Brian has already texted me. He's like, hey, you do DoorDash. What could be the problem here? And he explains all that to me. And I'm like, it's got to be like driver error. I got nothing. <laughs> well, I also wanted her, his perspective because I always tip. I always tip. The only time I generally don't tip is those times where you go to pick up the order at the, at you put an order for pickup at a restaurant and the way the receipt prints, it still has a tip line. And I'm like, well, I haven't gone in and done anything. So sometimes I, I debate that. But if I'm if there's a driver, I'm always tipping because the driver fee and you can't even see my finger quotes that I'm doing, but hopefully you can imagine them. That doesn't go to the driver. That's just another way for the restaurant to make more money. So I always tip the driver, but I'm in a weird spot now where I'm like, it's been an hour, an hour and a half, and I'm being told it's because of driver error. So and I'm getting PO'd, so I'm thinking maybe not this time. So I kind of wanted his perspective on that too. Um, 
But so, yeah, so we're waiting. So 6.54, I call, and luckily I'm not on hold. And I'm like, hey, I am still waiting. And he's like, what's the address? And I'm like, it's Brian's place. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, we had to switch drivers. So it'll be out to you, and we're going to throw in a free drink. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. And they're like, all right, bye. I didn't really have time to think about it. that call. According according to my phone, was less than a minute, <laughs> so just long enough for him to figure out who I was. And I'm thinking, and I told Carrie that, and she's like, "Is it going to be a hard drink?" And I'm like, "Because neither <laughs> of us, neither of us drink. It's not a moral thing. It's just more of a we never got into a thing." But at this point, <laughs> at this point. It's two hours since she placed the order. But I'm thinking, okay, surely, surely, because they're switching drivers, we will get fresh food. And they have now included a drink, which says that someone is coming from the store. So when did I text Chewy that the food was there? I said, pizza here at 744. And to be fair, I believe that was after I got the pizza from the guy. So let's be generous and say that took four minutes, which it didn't. So 740. And the drinking question is a two liter of Sprite, which, I mean, I'm not knocking on Sprite, but was just, I can imagine them at the store being like, eh, give them this, <laughs> you know? Like, I didn't ask for it. They didn't say, choose from the... They just threw it in. Uh, Random Keho wants to know, how far is this pizza place from Brian's place? 20 minutes in heavy, heavy traffic. Probably closer to 15. If, if you get there in 10, then you're probably breaking the laws of physics and all speeding limits. So I feel like between 10 and 15. But you're so, within... Like this was the the pizza place's delivery driver, so he's within a, the certain radius. Yeah, like this wasn't like a DoorDash thing. And so keep in mind, not only is this going on three hours, three hours from when Carrie ordered it, an hour, uh, two and a half hours since it went out the door. But even when I called at six fifty four. They said they had switched drivers, and it and that person was literally on the way to us. Six fifty four, and it's an it's fifty five zero forty five to fifty minutes later that he gets there. The pizza is clearly the original pizza. It is two, either medium or large pizzas, one order of Parmesan bread bites, which are little, you know, breadsticks kind of broken up and. We debated where whether not to even get them because they tend to be a little greasy because that's just how they come. Well, these were greasy and they've been sitting in it. And one order of their cinnamon sticks. And it was all cold. If it wasn't cold, it wasn't warm. It was like assumed room temperature because it had been in the car for two and a half hours. So when did when was the original order placed? Four fifty five ish. And, and it went out their door at, like, 5.15. 5.15. And it arrived at 7.40. Yeah. But we were... We were told at, you know, 6.15, 6 6.20, it'll still be fresh. Yeah, right. Mets or Kimmy's uses. I could have flown from Buffalo in three hours, right? Uh, should have brought me a pizza. <laughs> so, uh, and so the guy, the, the second driver, who I'm sure was not involved with any of the first half of this stuff, you know, I'm not blaming any one particular person, um, was very apologetic and gave me the drink and gave me the pizza and said, Yeah, it's been, my manager said it's been comped. It will show it back on your card in a couple of days. Depends on the bank. And I said, well, bank, we used a, a, a gift card. And he said, ooh, well, I'll tell the manager. And if we have to, we'll add it to the sales notes that, you know, just the next time you order, it'll be comped. And I'm thinking, 
<laughs> like I'm ever ordering from you people again. <laughs> well, basically, because I, I don't take some people I know will will ban a restaurant at the drop of a hat or kind of that's how it feels. I have literally said this, I think, twice. Once is this one where I'm just like, I don't feel like I want to give them my business. The other was at a Wings restaurant um, where we went in, Carrie, just Carrie and I, I think this is pre-Sam, and we were shown to a table and they literally forgot about us. And I don't mean like maybe, I mean like after a half an hour and no one has come to take our drinks, which I know that was probably waiting too long anyway. But we were trying to be patient. Between twenty minutes and a half an hour, I got up and reminded them we were there, and they're like, "They're oh, oh, we're so sorry. We'll get right to you." And it was still another twenty minutes before they took our drink orders. So twice have I ever said I'm never going back to someplace. I don't care, like if they're doing the special today or. Uh, Sam's school is supporting them for Spirit Night because they do that for some of the local places. Literally a miserable experience, and it's not that we did anything whatsoever. So, yeah. So uh, that this pizza place is a national chain and has another uh, location in the exact opposite direction of our house, but it's relatively close to the same distance. They just won't deliver to us because we're just outside of it, and I would rather give them my money. Just plan ahead to pick it up. Because remember, this whole thing started with this will be faster. We don't have we don't want to take the time to make dinner. This will be faster. So I, I texted Chewy that when the pizza got there and he said, quote, seriously, holy crap, because I think you told you told me later that you just assumed at some point certainly I had gotten the food. Yeah, like, when I didn't hear anything else from him, I I just sort of figured that they'd gotten the food and he'd eaten it and he, you know, there's no reason to talk to me anymore. So. <laughs> oh, no, I was going to chronicle this, so. Like, damn. Yeah. So, Carrie put in a support ticket through their website, also emailed them, also, I think, sent them some message through social media. Carrie is not one to go ballistic on anybody. She is She is so just... She doesn't like to hold grudges. She'd rather just move on. But this was a Carrie's terrible... pretty chill. This was a horrible, awful experience. Like, how bad do you have to be to screw up, make pizza... Take two person, that well, and bad. You, and you know what she said was 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 probably the worst part. And granted, this whole thing is horrible. Was the fact that they never initiate contact with any of us. You, we never heard from them. Hey, the first driver's a little lost. He's getting to you. Never heard from them. Hey, he had to come back. Da, 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 da. Literally, like if we had not picked up the phone, would we have heard from them? Would in you have ever hours. gotten your pizza? Yeah. yeah. Would we have gotten it? Would we have heard from them in three hours? Would the pizza just have shown up on our, our doorstop? What, what, what they, they, even aside from even whether or not we got the pizza, they never picked up the phone to say, this is what's going on. We're working on it without us initiating it. So now it could be. Like, the never calling you thing. It could be that the driver didn't tell them what was going on. Or that they don't actually have a way to contact you easily. Or it's not part of their... Like, I won't give them any crap for not contacting you. Like, if anyone should have contacted you... Now, speaking as a DoorDasher, it should have been the, the driver. Who should have had access to your number and be like, Yo, where the hell do you live? Or... Hey, something's gone wrong. I'm sorry. Or something. But why? What trips me out was that your pizza was marked as delivered like 40 minutes uh, after it went out the door or something like that. And then you, you, you never, you never actually got it, but it was marked as delivered. What is that? Yeah. Which again, I don't, 
you know, I didn't know. Does that mean that someone else got it? We had a bad experience a couple of years ago where we ordered a new washer and dryer from Costco. And I'm not thrown off on Costco because Costco farms out their del delivery service. So it was somebody else. And they delivered it to our old address, which is super weird because we hadn't had that address in years. And it shouldn't have even been on our account. And whoever lived there just took them. <laughs> They're like, sweet, new washer and dryer. So, and Costco didn't give us a hard time about this at all, but we had to like reschedule and get it all figured out. So not to say that I think that's going to happen again, but when I see we're waiting on a pizza and it's been an hour and it's now marked as delivered, my natural thought is, did this go to someone else? Did someone else just go, hey, I like pizza. Plus, whoever ordered these pizzas has really good taste because these are awesome pizzas. I will take <laughs> these pizzas. So, yeah, I it, just a just a failure on every part. It was it was just absolutely miserable and ruined the whole evening. Sam usually goes to bed around seven, and she had not eaten dinner until eight o'clock, almost eight o'clock. So, woohoo, staying up late. Er, er. Yeah, on a school night. And we were going to like do some stuff together as a family and couldn't do that because we were always five minutes from the pizza coming because we didn't know and they kept telling us it was about there. So, let's not talk about delivery drivers and bad experiences with delivering pizza. Chewy, how was your evening tonight? Well,. I so okay, Monday and Tuesday for for door dashing were both ridiculous. Like I made a lot of money in a very short period of time on Monday and Tuesday, and I predicted after that that the rest of the week's gonna suck. And yesterday was okay. Yesterday was okay, uh, except for my last order, which was way further away than I thought it was when I accepted it or I might not have accepted it and the people at Panera, apparently no one at the, the local Panera here actually was given the responsibility of dealing with DoorDash drivers because I stood there and stood there like with an arm on the counter waiting on anyone to even look in my direction. I could see my order right there on the counter back there all taped up and sealed. So I knew it was ready. And nobody would even look at me. And after waiting for probably about five minutes, I went, I don't have time for this. I just walked back there, picked it up, and left without saying anything other than mumbling something about, uh, I think it was, goddamn amateurs. <laughs> like, not under my breath. I think I mumbled it loud enough to where anyone nearby could have heard me. Because occasionally I do get passive aggressive like that. Uh, and then that person lived all the way on the other side of Walkertown. Which I, like I said, didn't realize when I picked it up. And then I took it, and it said, leave it at the door. So I left it at the door, and snapped a picture, and uh, knocked on the door. And as I was getting in the car, the door opened. And as always, I, I, I uh, said something like, uh, thanks a lot, have a good night. And she goes, ah. And I went, okay. And as I was getting in the car... She turned her head and yelled into the house, Your fucking food's here! And I was like, whoa! <laughs> so that was that was last night. Sweet. Yeah. Tonight, uh, was just dead. I turned down, okay, not dead. There were lots of orders, but none of them were worth the time. I turned down lots of, like, go eight miles for three dollars orders, which... No. <laughs> or go to Walmart uh, grocery for 60 some uh or uh items and we'll give you a $6. I was like, "No." Uh I I turned down I turned down so many orders tonight because they were all just complete crap. Uh but I did accept four. And one of them was uh for uh, an Italian joint that is notoriously slow, right? Mm -hmm. But luckily, the order was ready when I got there. I said, yay, I picked it up. 
brought it inside. And while I was standing there, I got an order for Zaxby's, which is a fast food chicken place here, right? It's it's sort of like Bojangles because it's a fast food chicken place. They're all the same thing, right? Right. I like it. I'm, I'm actually more of a fan of Zaxby's than Bojangles. I'm going to guess that's because you, you uh, grew up with Bojangles because it seems like people that didn't grow up with Bojangles around them love Bojangles. And I think those people are weird. Actually, I didn't have any Bojangles. You have more of them in the south than in the north. Oh, right. I forget. So, you didn't grow up around here. Yeah. Maybe you got used to it in college or something? I don't know. But I personally gave up on Bojangles a long time ago after three different Bojangles stores screwed up my orders multiple times, once giving me chicken that was only half cooked. No. Oh. Yeah, I took a bite and went, Oh, what the f-? And it was a chicken sandwich. And I picked up the bread and went, What is this? But it was when I worked at the shit job during the uh, dark times and I only had 30 minutes for lunch and I'd used up 15 of it to go get this crap. So I ate the fries and went back into work. And that's when I actually swore off, uh, uh, uh Bojangles. But anyway, unless you're at, uh, the convention center in Charlotte, in which case you sort of have to eat at Bojangles because there's only three things in the convention center in Charlotte and the other two are either expensive or there's 80 people in line. I'll eat Bojangles then every time. But anyway, anyway. So, I, I go to Zaxby's. And right and the way Zaxby's, this Zaxby's here works is you have to call them and tell them you're there. And they will run it out to you. So, as I was reaching my thumb to hit the call button. Because I put their number in my favorites. Because I got sick of having to look it up every time. As my thumb was reaching for it. I got a, a text that said, taking that long, four question marks, that's crazy. And I went, what the hell? And then I got the, the well, at first I got the, this is DoorDash connecting you for your to your customer. So I knew this was a, a customer. And I went, ex- and I typed, excuse me? And I called Zaxby's and said, yeah, I'm in spot number three. This is the name. They said, thank you. I said, okay. As... This person said, says 45 more minutes. And I said, which, which restaurant did you order from? And they're like, the Italian place. And I went, oh, okay. I can't imagine why it says it would take that long. It gave me another order to pick up on the way, but I'm already there and it's a fast food place. So this will only take a couple minutes. I said, mine will be cold. And I said, it's in my hot bag, sitting on my seat and my seat warmer's on. I think it'll be fine. I said, are you bringing mine before you deliver the other? And I'm like, this is all text conversation. And I said, I honestly am not sure. It depends on where they are in relation to each other, but you're both in the same direction. I said, and then a couple minutes later, you're still at the other restaurant. Now, because I knew this person was impatient, I actually called Zaxby's back again after six minutes. Because the last time I picked up at this Zaxby's, they sort of forgot to bring me the order. Mm. And I was afraid that would happen again. So I uh. called back and a different person answered. I said, hi, I'm here to pick up the order for this name. He's like, yeah, yeah, we know we're unboxing it up right now. I'll bring it out to you. I went, sorry. And I said, the customer is texting me like a lunatic. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to double check. He's like, oh yeah, yeah. I'll be out in just a minute. I said, okay, thank you. And so I typed back, I am, they just said they're bringing it out to me in just a minute. And this person said, OMG. I'm like, uh, okay. And then a second later, I got, you got mine first. Line break. Bring mine first. An hour is unacceptable. I'm like, I can assure you that it won't be an hour from the time that I got your order. It's like, from when I ordered it. I said, well, you'll have to take part of that up with the restaurant you ordered from. (laughs) Because now this person has pissed me off. I said, they took only 10 minutes to fix my order. No issue with them. The issue is you did another order in between mine. And at this point now, I'm on the way to the first customer. Because the first customer, or the, the second customer, the, the Zaxby's order, is literally on... I have to drive past their driveway to get to this lady. So I stopped and opened the door. And there were people outside. And I just handed it to them. I said, here, here's your giant Zaxby's. It was a big-ass order. Y'all have a good mm-hmm. night. And so now I'm on the way to this person's house and, and I, and I couldn't take it anymore. So I said, and I'm going to read these 
verbatim, then just okay. give me a bad rating and be done with it. If I turn down orders, it counts against me. It doesn't matter if I'm in the middle of another one or not. I just do what the app tells me to do, and I'm very sorry. That means you have a small delay getting your dinner. And the response was, cold food. Line break. One hour. And I kept going. But harassing the driver doesn't do anything but make the driver angry. It doesn't help in any way whatsoever. And then this person starts backpedaling. It's probably not you, but DoorDash. I didn't harass you. And I'm still on a roll. I'm like, I'm just out here trying to make a living. I don't have time for people to mistreat me. Like, I'm not. It's the company. I said, well, then stop angry texting me and angry text customer service. And they respond, been lots of issues there. I just did. Told them it was the system. And as I pulled up in front of their house, I got, thanks for getting here as fast as you could. (laughs) And I get out and I unzip my hot bag and drop it off in front of the door, and ring the doorbell, and leave. And I text them, it's at your door, comma, have a good night. Well, this person was going to keep mistreating you until the minute that you stand up for yourself and actually can provide answers for why things are happening the way they are, and then all of a sudden, well, it wasn't you. Never mind the fact that they have been yelling at you yeah, for like, the last 20 minutes. Like, Dear Lord. Like, I so, timed it. Zaxby's brought me their order uh, within eight minutes of me calling to tell them I was there. And then the drop-off took probably two. So it was literally ten extra minutes. Your food is in my hot bag, zipped up, sitting on the seat warmer... Like, your food is fine. (laughs) And again, the hell am I supposed to do? I'm just the driver. I turned down like five orders already tonight, and then I get one that's not bad. So I take it. Because I'm trying to make a living here. Die in a fire. I do not have time for people who, uh, want to mistreat service. I bet this is the same person who, like, will complain, like, shake their empty drink at a, a, a waitress. Instead of saying, excuse me, can I get some more? They'll just shake the, the glass in the uh, in the ice. Or the yeah. ice in the glass. High probability of that being the case. And, like, it just made me... It just made me so mad. <laughs> so, I don't have a customer service voice. I can't be like, I'm so sorry, I'll get this to you as soon as possible. I was like, hey, shut up. Like, <laughs> excuse me. I sent screenshots of that entire conversation to uh, Amanda, who also, uh, you know, is the one who got me started door dashing. <laughs> and after a few minutes, I get, I can't believe you told her to angry text customer service. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yep. Well, at least then she wouldn't be angry texting you. Like, I had already decided I was taking the other person theirs first. But once I realized it was literally on a road that I was already on, I'm like, uh, well, now I have to. I can't go past these people. But, like, hang on. Hang on, hang on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up this Italian joint indoor. Oh, it's 920. I bet I can't. Pull out this Italian joint in DoorDash. I hate going to this Italian place. Especially since they'd stupidly opened up for uh, indoor seating again. Because they're always... Like, I always have to wait. Yeah, there's there's no time showing. (laughs) Usually it seems like it's like 40 minutes. from the time you order to the time you get it. You know, it gives you the estimated delivery time. Mm -hmm. I just, I can't stand that place because invariably I have to stand there and wait. And this one time I didn't. And thank goodness, because this customer might have crapped herself. Jesus. I'm glad she didn't come to the door. And I'm sure she didn't come to the door on purpose because I snapped on her. (laughs) So please, people, 
DoorDash drivers, their job is not to make sure that you have dinner as quickly as possible. Their job is to make sure everyone whose orders they have get their food. <laughs> I don't give a damn if you're hungry. You should have ordered it faster then. Shut up. Like, I'm not speeding to get you your food a minute earlier. And I'm not going to backtrack, like, go past an order to bring you your food two minutes earlier. Just, no. Stop taking orders for that restaurant. Uh, I would have, but this was one that actually paid kind of well. I turned down a lot of orders for this particular restaurant because it sucks. There was a time period right after they opened back up for indoor seating where I didn't realize they had opened back up. And after waiting 15 minutes for an order, I was like, I'm not coming back here anymore for a while. And I didn't for like a month, maybe more. And Amanda was like, hey, are you dashing? I said, yeah. She said, hey, I just ordered from this Italian joint down the street. Uh, do you think you'll get it? I went, I'll turn it down if I do. <laughs> <laughs> She said, oh, why? I was like, because it sucks. But I like their food. I'm like, I've never had their food. Okay, that's a lie. I've taken a couple dates there uh, years and years ago. I was like, yeah, but they suck and I hate them. <laughs> She's like, oh, well, I already ordered. I'm like, well, hopefully your driver doesn't have to suffer so that you can have uh, semi-decent Italian. Why don't you order from Giada's instead? <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, that, that 875 I got for going all the way to uh, the other side of Walkertown. Most of, so for those that don't know, DoorDash pays you like a pittance. Your actual DoorDash pay is very little. Uh, and it only goes up based on like distance. And it's usually, I think it's, it's like the baseline is like three bucks. Uh, and the rest is tip and that 875 675 came from DoorDash I got a two dollar tip from going all the way from Kernersville to the other side of Walkertown and I'm like ah <laughs> I really wish I had realized how far away it was but I did get that your fucking food's here that was great <laughs> uh, I've never had an actual like jerk customer before and I've been doing this almost a year now and that's the Is first it? of those I've ever had that was like that I had a couple that were kind of snooty a little bit but nothing like that just constant <laughs> via text so I guess I'm lucky <laughs> with that. Ugh. 